Hello there guys, it's me and Stable Voltage and welcome back to part 80 of Europa Universalis 4 as France. Things are going very, very well. I'm not sure why Brandenburg haven't flipped that siege over to me. Not that it matters an awful lot because, um, you know, they can't core it or do anything with it anyway. There we go, they have actually flipped it over. As soon as we had a neighbouring province that we had control of, Brandenburg flipped it over, so it is all good. Um, Britain have got nowhere left to run. They are kind of screwed right now um gonna start disbanding these um mercenaries as soon as possible uh we also need to rebuild some ships for some of our trade fleets one of our trade fleets actually lost uh, eight ships so we are going to need to do that i can do that um quite easily now so let's go ahead and um go into our naval units we're going to build 10 lights and do that there but we are going to do the usual thing of deselecting two of them so that will build us eight. And we will need to uh, upgrade our trade fleets as well. So there's a few more um, sieges won. So we've nearly got 100% siege on Great Britain. This is going absolutely fantastic. Brandenburg's actually doing just as much of the work here as I am, which is really good. So let's group you guys up, detach the mercs, and we will get rid of you. That will save us some money. Uh, National Spy Defense minus 10%, but we'll get some extra trade modifier. Good with that. So there's only three provinces over here on Great Britain to take. So that's a complete non-issue. There is still a coalition against us. It hasn't triggered yet. Castile's in it. Austria's definitely going to be in it once their um, truce with me ends, but... I don't know. I think I could take them. I've, I've recovered my manpower quite nicely as well. Although having those policies running certainly does help with that. Um, I know we're in a m war and I really should probably be saving money. But I do want to try and go and just get the last of these barracks everywhere. And I know some of these provinces aren't giving me a huge amount of uh, manpower. I mean, go ahead and get them in these places here where we don't have them. What about... Um, What's Tyrrell missing? Tyrrell doesn't even have training fields. Uh, and then we can actually go on to um, regimental camps, which give us a lot of manpower from these. Uh, as you can see, some places, I mean, Ile de France already has one. Um, we could get 78 extra manpower from this alone. 78 here. There's a 68. 68, 78, 68, 68, 78. A lot of really high manpower provinces around. Look at that one, 89 in Provence. Um, we've just blown through all of our money there though, so probably shouldn't build too many more of those, but it's good to have those buildings. I think we need to start, um, maybe spending some more on sort of, um, different types of buildings. Uh, Castile has left the military coalition against us. That is really, really good because they were probably one of the most powerful people in the coalition. In fact, um... Yeah, they absolutely hate our guts. Mainly because they're rivals. Um, they want our provinces, competing great power, aggressive expansion. We could probably improve relations with them. It's, it's going to be kind of fruitless. We'll never be friends with them or anything. But it will certainly help uh, a little bit. Uh, Bravaria has left the coalition. Venice has left the coalition. Munster's left the coalition. A lot of people leaving the coalition. They finally understand that we pose no threat. Yeah, of course. Well, that's good. Uh, we've had a general die. That's not very good. It's not our general that's over here in England. So it's one of the ones in France. Let's go and grab a new general. We can have another leader. We can actually have two. Let's go and grab a, another general. And uh, he's not bad. Look at 532. Could be better. Remember, though, we do have that policy that is increasing our tradition. So we should probably get better ones later on. Uh, you guys have done. You still have some mercs with you. In fact, you have a merc with you. So let's grab you. And in fact, that's all of our troops. You guys, I think, can come back down to uh, Oxfordshire for now. We'll just let Brandenburg siege out the uh, one remaining province there. We're at 99% war score. So that's going really, really well. In fact, um, getting a commandant. Yep, so we're literally just waiting for that siege to go. All looking good. I am saving the uh, admin points, like I said, because we will need to do some coring. So we need to consider that. What's our inflation looking like now? We have the mines. Yeah, because we've got the yearly, inflati yearly inflation reduction, which is quite nice. 
80 ducats a month ain't bad. Not when you consider that we've got a massive army that's at full maintenance and is near enough always at full maintenance. Our religion is fine. We've got 100% religious unity. Uh, we could start going through if we wanted to and doing a little bit of culture conversions. Um, because there's a lot of, lot of places that have um, non-accepted cultures, uh, particularly English ones. It does take a while. Now, it costs 10 Diplo power, which isn't the end of the world. Um, it may well be worth grabbing some of these and flipping them over. So, grab the odd one or two. It won't take too long. Um, so we can either have French Mexico gaining 10% liberty desire and plus one mercantilism, or we can lose one mercantilism. What is French Mexico's current liberty desire? That's the question. Uh, French Canada, French Mexico. Liberty desire is 18%. Uh, gain one mercantilism, thank you very much. Uh, what are the rest of them looking like, actually? Uh, liberty desire. Nouvelle Flandre. Everyone's good. We don't have to worry about that. French Mexico gained 5% liberty desire. So somebody's trying to support their independence. Oh, well, I don't mind that too much. We we are still good in the grand scheme of things. 100% uh, siege there on um, Great Britain. Uh, that was bad timing for Britain's navy there as the um, somebody's m fleet turned up and just flattened them. Was it my trade fleet? Not too sure. Might be my trade fleet there. Um, still only at 99%. Because they haven't gone and taken those provinces there. Because they're actually controlled by rebels. Uh, I wonder if they're actually going to attempt to do that. Papal States left the military coalition. Could I actually tell them? Yeah, I can't. Um, we're not. We're not because we're not specifically at war with Newfoundland. I can't actually set that as as an objective, which is a little bit of a pain. Um, but we, it should be enough to um, to take this stuff, though. So, let's have a look at this. If I wanted to go in and say, peace out Great Britain. Because we can separate peace Great Britain out in this war. So, if I go in to Great Britain and say, let's, let's have a peace treaty. And how about I take Gloucestershire, because you don't, you don't really need that. Or Lancashire. Or Lincoln. Um... And then we go over here and say, how about you give up that and maybe that, that, um, maybe, well, you're not willing to give up all of them, but you're willing to give up a few. Can we get any more of these from you? What about if I take one province less from you myself? What about if I don't take Lincoln? Because... It's going to be less aggressive expansion for me at the end of the day, and it's also going to be less coring, because there will be more wars against Great Britain. Now, how much more could I grab over here? A lot. And that's England almost wiped out on this... Uh, well, Great Britain almost wiped out. Uh, let's do that. Let's also go ahead and um, get war reps. And uh, take some money from you. Send demands. So that'll be England out of the war. And then we can go into the war with... We can go into these guys. Don't have a diplomat free. So we've got to wait for a diplomat to come home. We do have a diplomat free. Stop lying to me, game. Uh, Great Britain no longer considers France a rival. Good. Full annexation. Send demand. Bob well, on. There we go. Fantastic. So we are growing really well. Now, in terms of coring... Uh, what do we need to do? Gloucestershire and Lancashire. Oh. That still leaves us with 631. Um, and as you can see, it's not quite as much border gore here. If we'd have taken Lincoln, the reason I was going to take Lincoln and not Norfolk is because I actually have claims on Lincoln and Derby, but I didn't have a claim on Norfolk. Um, now, unfortunately, Brandenburg have kind of left themselves stuck over here now, and the AI is a little bit derpy at shipping black flag troops back. Uh, hopefully, it'll sort that out. Let's go ahead and grab our admin tech. Main reason for that is it puts us ahead of time. Only slightly, but even being ahead of time slightly gives you a 20% production efficiency. So that is really going to help things out. 
Going to get a new level of galley at the next Diplotech level. That doesn't really matter because we don't use galleys. We don't really use inland seas. Um, we have a costly embargo against Great Britain. That's because they are no longer a rival. So we're going to revoke our embargo. Um, we also want to have a look and... Okay, so... Well, we, well, we don't have too few rivals. Um, Castile and Russia are both our rivals. I'm going to actually go ahead and rival Austria. They make the most sense because I've only got three options. Portugal, Brandenburg and Austria. And I'm allied with two of them and Austria hates me. So I might as well do that. There's also a high chance that I'm going to go to war with Austria often. Um, so let's go ahead and... Um, oh, we have a truce so we can't embargo them. But certainly we can, uh, we can attack them later on. And... Um, might save, obviously spent some of the Diplo power on the uh, on the peace treaty. Um, right, what was that group? The English Channel group. So we've got these eight lights here. You are going to protect trade in the English Channel. There we go. And you will form up and make that fleet back up to 60. We've got those guys that are still stranded over here. So get on the boat, and the boat is going to come over to Amor. And then we'll go and get the last two guys, and we'll sort out our troops. What do we like on force limit? We're still massively behind. Um, let's go ahead and do our sort of standard 20 and build a stack in limousine. So that will be very, very nice. Well, we're expanding quite nicely. What would I like to take next? Not only has taken uh, Tyrol split Austria in half, uh, but taking Waldstadt has also split Milan up as well. So these two provinces for them become very, very hard for them to defend. If, if rebels pop up there, they just they can't really get to them. Um, even though Austria Austria's land is split, it's not like I've just um, cut off a small individual province. So they do have a fair bit of space, but Tyrol will, will make quite a lot from us because, uh, because of the gold. Well, apparently this... Gold doesn't have a current price, which is really weird. Um, assign province to client state. Never really used client states. Not 100% sure how they work. Um, so I'm not going to be clicking on that button just to see how things turn out. Is it because it's still looted? I don't know. So another thing that we were going to do as well that I haven't been keeping my eye on was we were going to carry on upgrading these um, places down here that we haven't really done. So let's go ahead and see what we can build. We were trying to get as many of the uh, trade buildings as possible. I think they've all got road networks. Road network already built. Um, so we could go and put post offices down. Gives them a lot of extra trade power. Uh, post offices are expensive because they're 250 each. Um... But it certainly helps with trade power. So let's go ahead and just spend a ridiculous amount of money doing that. We'll have to wait to get the last two. But that's not, that's not too bad. The amount of money that we make and the speed at which we make it is quite, quite quick. Um, you guys have arrived. Um, let's go and put you in Bourgogne. Uh, you can go back and grab the last two. Don't, don't really need to pause it. There's nothing going on. Um, so you can go back there. So, yep, Great Britain is literally limited to three provinces here. There's nowhere that Newfoundland can go from this direction. Uh, in this direction, yeah, there's a couple of provinces that they could try and colonise, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, and we could also, if we really wanted to, um, we could get these guys to jump straight into war with any of these um, nations and instantly gobble them up. So that's not going to be an issue at all. We need to start working our way up this way just so we can create um, uh, French California. Because uh, this will be co Colonial California. So if we can grab French California, then that means that we don't need to worry too much about um, about these places being ours. Because they'll actually become their own uh, their own colonial nation. So we can get, lose a stability for an inflation or we can gain three inflation. Um, reducing inflation... Costs. Actually, no, we're just going to take the gain three inflation, and I'll tell you why we're going to do that. We could reduce the inflation for 75 admin power. You think about it. 
If we were to reduce our inflation down to zero, that cost us 150 admin power. If we had two stability and we wanted to go up to three stability, that would that would cost us way more than 150 admin power. But we have this yearly inflation reduction guy, so we don't even have to worry about it. It'll go down on its own. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, I might get a conquistador and actually move him down uh, down here so we can see see down this way a little bit better. I see Holland's actually Holland and Castile have actually got some um, stuff up here now, so that's potentially problematic. But I'm not worried too much about it. That there isn't an awful lot of room they can expand, and they can fight between themselves really. So we're going to have much more strength over here. Um, unfortunately, Norway did colonise out there, which was a bit of a pain. Um, of course, if they want to start a war, they're, they're probably going to lose. Now, what's Norway themselves like? Uh, let's have a look. Norway, Norway, Norway. Uh, Norway only have 16,000 men. Wow. Am I looking at the right line? Norway. Yeah, 16,000 men and 22,000 manpower. They are in pretty bad shape. What's their navy like? Um, I'm not sure why they're so weak. I haven't looked over there for a while, though. Maybe I should. Norway, Norway, Norway. Where are you? And you only got 18 ships as well. What's going on, Norway? See, Norway is still quite large. It's not like it's... They've eaten a lot of Sweden. That's really weird. Oh, well. Not that I'm worried too much about that. Brandenburg. See, this could this could be a perfect opportunity if I actually wanted to go to war with Brandenburg. Because while they do have some troops over here, half of their troops are stuck over here. And, of course, I would still have to fight them. But we'll see. Extra tariff value from Nouvelle Flandre. Yep, yeah, why not? You still have to be careful, of course, because as you increase your... Or, Bavaria. Okay. Uh, as you increase your tariff value, um, it does actually increase their liberty desire. So you do have to be careful. Uh, what's our where's our tariff value? Tariff efficiency is 48%. So they will start trying to head towards that. Um, Bavaria, was it? Our royal marriage has ended. Do we want to keep it going? No, they don't want to do it anyway because they're outraged towards us. That's fine. Um, alliance offer from the Papal State. That's interesting. Colony has become self-sustaining. Excellent. So let's keep going around and just cutting off uh, any... Well, just a lake so nobody can get to it. But we'll go around and keep cutting off uh, water access wherever we can. Um, Papal State. Wow, I honestly didn't expect uh, an alliance offer from you. Um... Obviously, we can't get a royal marriage, can we? Because of the government type. Because it's a papacy. Hmm. Oh, well. Never mind. Uh, Sienna. What were we doing with you guys? I wanted to offer you guys an alliance. We can't royal marry you. So that's quite good. What are we... Are we over our relations? I don't think we are. We're at 8 of 8 now. Uh, Milan's going to hate us, so if we if our royal marriage with Milan breaks, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that. We could go ahead and try and annex Corsica. But considering it's just two tiny little island provinces out here, um, I don't really want to have to micromanage it, so we'll just leave them out there. They'll be fine. Um, oh, yeah, we've got those last two guys to come back. So get on the ships. And then we can fold those um, ships in with the uh, with the rest of the transports. Decide what we're going to do with the men. So let's drop you off at Amor. And uh, what have we got here in terms of transports? 28, so that'll make us up to 30 transports. We could get two more heavies, which will make us up to fi um, 50 heavies. Be a nice round number, wouldn't it? So let's go ahead and grab a couple of two-deckers. It's all looking good. The best thing is, if I was to declare war... No, no, actually not. I was going to say, if I was to declare war on England right now, Brandenburg would already have a 22 stack here, but they'd still be black flagged. Um, though I think if they walked into my territory, they would lose their black flag status. I think. Can't remember. I'm fairly certain that's the way that it works, though. It is amazing that... Um, I don't think Brandenburg are in any current wars right now. Um, no, they're not. So Brandenburg aren't in any current wars, but they haven't made any effort to try and bring their uh, their troops home, which is a little bit strange. Um, those guys have arrived, so you're going to go over here. We'll upgrade those transports as well. And decide what we're going to do with those guys. So let's take those um, two transports and upgrade them. 
We've also got the money now. So while we've got the money, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, Royal Marriage with Bohemia has ended. They've actually asked for another one. That's fine. Um, let's go ahead and build the post offices here and here. And there was something else that I just thought of, and I thought, oh, I really should do that before I end the video. And now I can't remember. Maybe it was upgrading this technology. Military tech. We are behind times on military tech. And we would get um, uh, redoubts and extra combat width. Not the greatest of military tech, um, but we might as well grab it. So that's fine. Gain some population. Milan's left the military coalition. Oh, well, that's all going quite well now. Um, let's group that together. Did I actually start my cores? Yes, I did. I couldn't remember whether I'd started coring the places in uh, in Britain that I'd captured. Um, you guys should already be at 25%. Yes, you are. So let's just go ahead and mothball you. And then we can group you guys together. Uh, another colony has become self-sustaining. Fantastic. So you're going to move up here. Now, can we colonize you? Yes, we can. Brilliant. So we can start actually getting some, um, some of... Where actually is Colonial California? Right, so it literally starts out... I think these provinces are still Colonial uh, Mexico. So we don't want these provinces here, but we do want to start working up on this side. And we'll, we'll, get, we'll get Colonial California going. Uh, we do have... Um, Holland's left the coalition. Good, good. Uh, we do have... One. So we only have one province in Colonial California. But that's not too bad. The rest of things is going quite nicely. There's not many wars going on within the HRE, and I think most of that is because there's one thing that can be enacted. I uh, can't remember which one it is. Nope, it's not that one. This one. This Sawaiga Lundfried. Uh, force member states to solve their disputes in courts of law rather than on the battlefield. So basically, it disallows internal HRE wars. So once you get um, uh, once you get this thing enacted, the HRE isn't allowed to declare war against each other. What we could do is we could go to war with Bohemia, and if we got a hundred percent war score against Bohemia, we could ask them to um, revoke an imperial reform and actually get that removed, and then the HRE would be able to fight amongst themselves. Obviously, they're a lot stronger if they're all united, but if they're fighting amongst themselves, it gives us a good opportunity to jump in uh, on the side of you know one of the uh, people involved in the HRE and not the other. So it gives us a good opportunity to split the HRE up. And then later on, as you go down here, HRE is now always inherited by the same country. So as it as the imperial reforms go up and up and up, it just makes the HRE stronger and stronger and stronger. So you do have to be very, very careful there. Uh, we have another self-sustaining colony, which is this one down here. Um, what I'm actually going to do, I can still have a free leader. I've still got some military points. I'm going to go ahead and grab a conquistador. And... Um Thank you. That Conquistador is actually very good. He's a 553. He's actually better than my last two generals. Um, and the reason that surprises me is in, I know for a fact, if you've got the El Dorado expansion. If you've got the El Dorado expansion, um, then a Conquistador is not as good as a general. I think they've got like 10% less stats than a general would have at the equivalent army tradition the same with um admirals and explorers now there was always a lot of discussion and debate um before el dorado ah that's already been taken that belongs to somebody else oh well, not a problem um we'll go over here so uh, before el dorado there was always a lot of debate about whether or not uh a general would be as good as a, a conquistador because when you wanted to get somebody say you wanted to get a conquistador um or, or you needed you needed a new military leader people would always say well well just get a conquistador because once you can get conquistadors there's absolutely no point in rolling a general because a conquistador is just as good as a general but they can also travel through Terra Incognita. Same with explorers an explorer is just as good as an admiral but they can travel through Terra Incognita 
And loads and loads of people did loads and loads of tests and rolls and re-rolls to see if there was any difference in the... I mean, obviously, it's, it's random to a certain degree. The allocation of stat points across uh, Fire, Shock, Maneuver and Siege. Um, but a, a lot of these... Um, points are based on your army tradition so the higher your army tradition the more points you will have in general obviously it's naval tradition for admirals and um people came to the conclusion that it didn't matter whether you had a conquistador or a general they they had the same stats overall uh but when El Dorado came out, they the developers did actually say that conquistadors and um explorers have less stats than an equivalent general or um admiral but i don't actually have the el dorado expansion so even though some of the changes from el dorado have taken place in the game because as you probably know if you play eu4 every time uh, paradox bring out uh, an expansion for this game they actually um Every time they bring out an expansion for this game, they also bring out a massive patch which changes a load of the mechanics. So sometimes you don't know what things have snuck in and what things haven't. That's very interesting. Austria is no longer considered a valid rival for us. Um, which is very interesting now, considering that um, we only have two valid rivals and they're both our friends. So I wouldn't really like to rival any of them. Luckily, we don't have the too few rivals penalty, so... That's not too much of a problem. Um, I don't mind that too much. A three-star general in a conquistador. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, in fact, once we've um, once we've uncovered some land over here, I may well move that conquistador over to the mainland just so that we can use him in battle. And there's our cause in Great Britain finished. I'm well aware that we've gone over the 20-minute mark, but um, that's fine. We'll be finishing this video very, very soon. Not an awful lot of use for a conquistador over here anymore. We have pretty much um, pretty much discovered everything that we are going to discover out over here. Uh, that's unless, obviously, we want to head into South America. Although most of South America has actually been uncovered because it's owned by uh, Castile or Portugal and whatnot. There's only a couple of little provinces down here that are owned by the Aztecs, uh, the Itza, and uh, New Castile, but... We could potentially grab them if we uh, if we wanted to. Uh, there's all of the exploration done over there that we need to. Um, let's move back up to here. Uh, we, right, what could we do here? We could gain uh, an advisor that we don't need or we can gain a load of free money. Free money, please. Uh, let's go ahead and um, we'll tell this one to colonize. You can go over there and sit in it. We are going to remove your leader because you, you're not really needed here. And we'll attach you to one of the units over here. I like how if you send a diplomat somewhere, you have to wait for that diplomat to get home and it can take them months. Yet you can just magically teleport a leader from one side of the globe to the other. So we have a national decision available, which is to um, pass the uh, Abolition of Slavery Act. And uh, we can do that because we our overextension is now less than 2%. And we have a diplomatic skill of at least 3 Basically, we gain 5 prestige and we get the increased initiative until 1712, which is 10 years. So it reduces our missionary strength, but also reduces our technology cost. We also get the Abolition of Slavery Act until the end of the game, which reduces our national tax modifier, but also reduces our stability cost modifier. So... By doing this, I'm going to be reducing my technology costs by 5%, but only for 10 years. But I'm going to be reducing my national tax modifier until the end of the game to get reduced stability cost, which is sitting firmly at 3. No, we're not going to pass the Abolition of Slavery Act because it's, it's better to just leave it where it is. It's better for us. I'm not saying that I uh, condone slavery because, of course, I don't. But in the game, for mechanics-wise, it's going to work out better for us. Um... That's that other heavy. You can move over here. Did that um, ship never actually form up? Did, we, did I never send those guys out? What have we got going on over here? Right, let's deselect this guy. Let's group these two guys together. Let's mothball them. Let's select them all up and group them. Job done. Right, somewhere we have... Right, where are you protecting trade in the English Channel? You're not supposed to be in the English Channel, now are you? You are supposed to be in Bordeaux. Or are you? Um, these guys. You are protecting trade in the English Channel. 
And these guys never end up meeting up with each other. English Channel. Eight ships. Protect trade. English Channel. They'll, meet, they'll probably bump into each other eventually. I think for some reason, they're both going around in a different direction. And they're just not quite bumping into each other. They're right behind one another. Um, truce with Russia has ended. Truce with Austria has ended. Now, this is going to be the uh, the $64,000 question here. Are Austria going to jump into the coalition? They don't usually do it on the actual month that the truce breaks. If they jump into a coalition, it's usually the month after. There's still a lot of really high aggressive expansion. Our, our aggressive expansion is, uh, with Austria is 100, minus 182. That's never going to go away. Well, they haven't coalitioned us yet. Maybe they think we are too big and scary. But that's going to be something to deal with for another video. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you are still enjoying EU4. And I'll see you next time. So until then, goodbye for now.